All right, guys, welcome back. Um, it's been a while since I've actually done anything on this car. It's been really demotivating, and um, the more and more I dig into it, the more I realise that it's just not worth it, really. It's, I'm on a hiding to nowhere. Um, I feel a little bit out of my comfort zone, and um, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna admit defeat, and I'm gonna send this off to the professionals. Um, I know that's not what you guys want to hear. Um, you want to see me finish this because I'm all about it. If I can do it, you can do it. But I just, I've got to stop. I can't take this anymore. This is killing me. I'm sorry. Only joking. Let's crack on. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a few months actually since I posted because it's been absolutely freezing and um, I'm not working on the driveway when it's freezing cold like that. I had enough of that last year so um, it's taken a bit of a backseat while life got on with things and um, as you can see now, the sun is shining. It's a beautiful sunny day. <laughs> it's still cold. So um, let's see how we get on. Let's try and get this piston in, shall we? Quite exciting but... Um pretty nervous stuff um, but I've been putting this off for a reason because this is if I get this wrong it's uh I won't find out for a very long time and then I have to do all the work again so <laughs> fingers crossed this goes well anyway let's crack to it so here's the old piston <clears throat> with the hole where it's not supposed to be so I've got some new rings I've got some bolts uh, I've got some assembly lube uh, I've got some new bearings and I've got a Replacement piston. Let's make sure that's the right around And I've got a replacement piston as well, but this is a little bit coked up, so I'm just gonna um, give that a bit of a scrub just to get some of this crap off it because I don't know will that cause detonation if it's all in there. I don't know, just, let's just decoke it anyway. If you haven't been here before, thanks for watching. Um, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Leave some comments down below as well, that always helps with the algorithm. Um, I feel like I'm begging, but... Um... Right, so I've cleaned up about as much as I'm going to, or need to. So I've got all the deposits off the side. And deposits off the top so that's nice and clean just need to make sure that's um all the stuff's gone <clears throat> here's the old one for comparison so it already looks bad doesn't it and i've taken the rings off and this is the bit that actually broke so Ugh. look at the state of that my poor piston i mean it's properly oh toast man anyway so this is all nicely cleaned up now and I'm just going to double check a few things and then we will put the rings on and slide it in the top of the engine. Okay, so time to put these rings on then. So the order you put the rings on is the oil scraper, then you put the middle ring, then you put the top ring. As it says, ABC. And the BMW uh, rings, the oil scraper is an integrated thing. So you'll see it's like a, got to be careful with this, it's expensive and fragile. So there's like a, a spring type thing, ring that goes around the inside and then the retainer on the out. And when you look on the piston, you've got, you see these um, oil channels. So you've got two holes either side that actually feed the oil from the inside of the, the piston. So that sort of provides the oil lubrication as the rings are sliding up and down. So we've got to put on this one, then we've got to put on this one, then we've got to put on this one. So I'm going to try and do this. Um, and show you how I'm going to affect that. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So that's the oil scraper ring in, and it will look when you look down. So it looks like it's oversized, but when you put the um, the compressor over it, it will squeeze all that up, and you'll actually be able to slide it in. So that's one. So that's going to be. Yeah. 
if you left it like that you can see the gap is across there so any gases have just got like a clear path so what we want to do is rotate these so I'll do one down there I'll do the middle one down the other side and the top one there let's try and work this out So they're about 120 degrees off each from each other. So I've got one there, one at the top, and one on the side. So it's like literally one there, one there, and one there. Right, next thing we need to do to get this in the car. Well, first thing I need to do is give this a clean. And this is my old, my uncle's, this goes back, God, how many years? I think I showed a picture of this before. Look at that. <laughs> so this is a piston ring compressor. So what this will do is this will slide over, you crank it up, it compresses them, and then you can slide the piston into the actual um, cylinder wall or cylinder itself. So I'm gonna just get this ready, give it a clean up, and then I'll be back. All right, can you see me? So I've still got these. So I'm gonna double check my ring gaps. So I've got one there, I've got one there, and I've got one there so that's about 120 degrees away from each other just giving this a clean up so this will just slide over and the idea of this is so what it does is it's a as you expand or as you crank this, I'll give you a little look in case you've not seen one of these before. So it expands. Oh, where's the camera? Expands and compresses. So what you do is you crank this round. So that's now effectively clamping the um, the surfaces together it's got little notches to stop this actually going inside so there's little notches on the outside of it and obviously you've got the big thing on top but that's going to stop it from falling into the, the piston itself so that should be enough and then you drop this down and then with like a little hammer you tap it through and it should slide through and um, so i don't know whether to put a little bit of lubricant on i haven't done this for a while i might put a little bit of lubricant on these before i do that actually So we have got front of engine, where is the indicator? So the front of the engine, there's a little arrow on, you probably can't see it, there's a little arrow on, show this one. There's an arrow on the crown of the piston just there that shows where the front of the engine is supposed to be. Um, so we know that was on the back side as well. So the when I look at it, the front marking is there. Yeah, you can't see that. So the front markings down there, so it's got to go in the engine that way. Step closer one step closer so piston is in but it's not connected so let's dive under the car and um, see about doing that bit I suppose that's better so I thought that arrow was for the front of the engine but it's clearly not um, because there's a marking on the side, I'll show in a second, so it's got X1, X1, so on each side, so you can see on this one, it's got a marking, so you match up the markings on the side of the cases to make sure that actually when I've just snipped it up, that disappears completely, so 
Let's get it right. So what I need to do is I need to rotate the engine so that these are down a little bit more. Now we can see this. This is the cap we just did. So. I'm going to go and get my torque wrench. Perfect. And I'm going to double check on my settings. Right, a couple of you have been selling these, get some proper tools. So, say hello to my little friend. So this is the half inch square drive digital torque wrench with angle function which is the critical thing because whilst I can torque it up to 20 Nm to start off with, with my old torque wrench I've then got to put, I have to double check again, I think it was 70 degrees um, into the bolts after they're torqued up. So this thing <coughs> will give me that. So, um, oh she's a beauty. Um, so thank you to Santa for bringing this to me this year. Okay, so I've just been double checking the torque setting, so I've got to go through a process of tightening and loosening the screws because they're new bolts on an old rod. So if you do the new rods, new bolts, you just do the first set. So you do 5 Nm, 20 Nm, 30 Nm, 75 degrees, but because it's an old con rod, you have to tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, loosen it, tighten it. So we start off with 5, then we go to 20. Then we go to 30, then we go to 75 degrees. So that was nearly a disaster. I don't know if you can see. Look at the state of that. This is one of the new bolts and it gave way. I don't know whether it was just like badly seated or what, but I mean the E12, 12s, E12s. So here's the E12. And now it won't even sit in there. It's just mauled. It won't even go in there. So I've had to use another one of my other bolts and go through the process. So 5 Nm, 20 Nm, 30 Nm, 75 degrees, back it off 180, 5, 20, 30, 75, back off 180, 5, 20, 30, 75, back off 180, 5, 20, 30, 75, which is what I've just done. So I can tick, tick. So now, if we come out to the car, you see we have one glorious piston with no bloody holes in it, and the other ones are all there. And if I go under the car, if I come under the car, you can see here. Here is the, the one I've just put on. If I focus, so it's got the newer caps and everything. So what I'm going to do now, because it's getting late, that's going to be an awful lot longer than I thought it was going to take. So I'm going to spin the engine back round to the position it needs to be in, so I can lock it off top dead centre. Um, but that's done. So all I've got to do now is this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I've got to do all those other bearings um, before I can then tidy this up. That gasket on there for a moment, tidy this up and um, start putting it all back together. But effectively, that piston's replaced. So, if I was really lazy, I would um, just close it up and go from there. But I've got to change the bearings because they were showing signs of wear. Uh, so, that's me done for the day. <clears throat> um, piston's in, bearings done, it's all buttoned up, it's all talked up properly. I've just got seven more pistons to change the, um, the bearings on. And that's a bit of a pain in the backside line under the car to be honest, but they are worn and they do need doing otherwise it's just gonna come back and buy me later. So um but that's a job for another day. 
Um, so I will do that in the next instalment, I guess. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed yourself, hit that like and subscribe. If you haven't, hit the dislike, I guess. If you're still here, you probably, don't know, if you didn't like it and you got this far. Bad life choices, I guess. Anyway, thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you on the travel next time. Cheers, guys.